Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for March 2020. Our latest results show that nationally housing values surged by 1.1% last month, with values across five of Australia's eight capital cities reaching a new record high in February. The strongest capital gains are continuing to emanate from Sydney, where values are up 1.7%, and Melbourne with a 1.2% rise over the month, while the remaining capital cities recorded a more modest rise. Darwin was the only exception where home values were actually down 1.4% in February. On an annual basis, both Sydney and Melbourne moved back into double-digit annual growth rates, with values up 10.9% and 10.7% respectively over the 12 months ending February. The latest results continue the recovery trend that's been running since June last year, following a peak to trough decline of 8.4% in the National Index, with larger falls in Sydney, which was down 14.9%, and Melbourne, where values fell by 11.1%. While there's a large amount of variability in capital growth from region to region across the product types, every capital city excluding Darwin is showing an upwards trajectory in housing values, demonstrating a geographic broadening in the recovery as low mortgage rates and better access to housing credit fuel buyer demand. Since finding a trough last year, the National Index finished February only 1.2% below its 2017 peak. At the current run rate of growth, the National Index is likely to reach a new nominal high over the next couple of months. Melbourne was the most recent city to stage a nominal recovery, with housing values surpassing their 2017 peak last month. Melbourne is joined with Brisbane, Canberra, Hobart and Adelaide, where housing values are also tracking at record highs. Further evidence that the long-running downturn is over for the Perth housing market was revealed last month, with dwelling values increasing by 0.3%, marking four consecutive months where dwelling values have avoided a fall, a trend we haven't seen since the market peaked back in mid-2014. Although Perth values are now trending higher, the recovery period is likely to be a long one, with Perth housing values remaining 21% below their peak. Regional markets are generally lagging behind the capital cities, with housing values only 1.4% higher over the past 12 months, compared with a 7.3% rise across the combined capital city markets. The diversity across regional Australia is quite extreme, with drought affected areas impacting on the regional index. Meanwhile, the regional centres, adjacent to the largest capital cities as well as coastal and lifestyle markets, are generally showing a stronger performance. In line with the improved housing market conditions, we've also seen a surge in housing credit and a substantial lift in buyer activity. The value of new housing credit commitments surged by 23% through the second half of 2019, and the value of investor commitments was up by 15.5%. Similarly, CoreLogic's estimate of settled sales activity has lifted from the recent lows up about 26% over the second half of the year compared with the first half, demonstrating increased buyer demand on the back of easier access to credit and low mortgage rates. While housing values are generally rising, rents are travelling at a much more sluggish pace, rising only 1.4% nationally over the past 12 months. With housing values rising more rapidly than rents, gross rental yields are swiftly compressing. Across the combined capital cities, the gross yield was tracking at 3.48% in February. That's the lowest yield reading since February 2018. The current gross rental yield is only nine basis points away from a record low. Gross rental yields in Sydney are tracking at new record lows each month, falling to just 2.99% in February. Despite overall weak housing market conditions, Darwin's gross rental yields are the highest of any capital city at 5.9%. However, this is really a reflection of housing values falling faster than rental rates rather than growth in rental values. The strongest yield dynamic is in Hobart, where the overall tight housing market conditions have pushed gross rental yields to 5%, providing a total return of 10.5%. The total return factors in the gross yield as well as the annual capital gain. Housing values across Adelaide are showing a consistent but mild upwards trend, with values rising four tenths of a percent over the past 12 months. Sales activity has been trending roughly in line with the decade average, and selling conditions have shown a subtle tightening compared with a year ago. Homes are selling slightly faster at 48 days on average, and vendors are offering up slightly less discount on their asking prices. 
Interestingly, the highest capital gains over the past 12 months have been across the lower quartile value range, which is up 2.4% in value compared with a 1.4% fall across the upper quartile. Geographically, the Adelaide subregion with the highest annual growth rate has been at Gawler, with a 5.3% gain in housing values over the past 12 months. The primary factors driving this housing market rebound remain in place and include an extremely low cost of debt and improved borrowing capacity. However, considering the sluggish pace of household income growth, housing affordability is eroding rapidly, which is likely to see some parts of the market become less active. In Sydney, Melbourne, and to a lesser extent in Hobart, affordability constraints are likely to gradually push demand towards the middle and outer ring suburbs or towards the cheaper price points in the medium to high density sector. Major regional centres with links to the major capitals should also benefit as demand spills over from the capital city metro regions. These more affordable segments of the marketplace have generally seen lower rates of capital gain over the cycle to date and offer lower barriers to entry, as well as higher rental yields for investors. Affordability pressures are far less pressing across the remaining capital cities. In regions such as Southeast Queensland and Perth, housing is very affordable relative to Sydney and Melbourne, jobs growth is trending higher and unemployment is reducing. These could be the markets to watch for a stronger performance later this year. There are some early signs that the rate of growth may have already peaked late last year across Sydney and Melbourne, as affordability constraints dampen participation in the market and advertised supply levels start to increase. Although affordability is becoming more challenging, home loan serviceability is the best it's been in many years, thanks to such low mortgage rates. The Reserve Bank cut the cash rate by another 25 basis points in March, with lenders generally passing on the full rate cut to mortgages. Looking ahead, a more significant downturn in consumer sentiment related to the coronavirus outbreak could become a determining factor that impacts the housing market over coming months. While housing demand is now relatively insulated from a downturn in foreign buyers and record low mortgage rates should help to support demand, the economic impact on key export sectors such as education, tourism and commodities is likely to result in weaker economic conditions and lower consumer sentiment. Consumer sentiment readings are already low and a further deterioration could see housing market activity start to slow. Monitoring the spread of the coronavirus and the impacts on the Australian economy and consumer attitudes will be a key part of understanding the housing market's performance over coming months. As always, you can stay up to date and in touch with the latest trends across the housing market by regularly checking the research pages at CoreLogic's website, www.corelogic.com.au.